Okay, Super Saturday party keeps rolling. Now we have Sam Jones from Tennis Express, and if you got, we already have people. I mean, you guys are awesome. Okay, we, we I see some great questions going. Neil, who was on our last live stream, is already back. We got Daniel; he's back, and he 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 already has some questions. We'll get to that. David Lee, who's been on with us all week. By the way, Sam, you might want to put in a good word with the big guy for me. We've been playing Grand Slam trivia, and uh, so far I've given out two hundred dollar gift cards from Tennis Express. Okay. On, on me, I'm, I'm getting them. I'm doing one more tonight. We're doing one more Grand Slam trivia uh, where we give a hundred dollar tennis gift card, and uh, and David won one. He actually won the second one, but then we're like, let's just give it to somebody else because you're like killing everybody. He's like Gotta super the world. Yeah. But um, this is Sam Jones from Tennis Express. Now, I did say on the last live, guys, that I know nothing about rackets. I know a lot about teaching tennis, but I never really became an expert at what's the proper racket and the best strings and what does this and what does that. So what I want to kind of do today, Sam, is pick your brain on, you know, what are some good rackets based on a certain skill level? What are some good rackets if you got like elbow or shoulder issues? What are good strings? Like what are what is good to match? Like can you get a good racket, but then all of a sudden you put the wrong string in it and it's like you make this great racket into a piece of crap? Like how does this all work? And and so we want to uh, – oh, Scott Levy's back. Scott Levy's one of the best people for tennis. He came out to a couple of our clinics. He is online all the time. Um, so we're calling this Super Saturday, Sam. So that okay. so right away I'm putting I'm putting you on the spot because some of our tennis people did not know this. Where did Super Saturday come from when it comes to tennis? Uh, you know. Okay. Uh, you want me to answer? Yeah. Do you know? Okay. I I think Super Saturday used to be the uh, Saturday of the final weekend of the U.S. Open. Yes. And you had men's semifinals and the women's final all in one ticket, maybe. I thought it was all one ticket. I'm not 100% sure about that. But then I'm also, I'm trying to remember if it was two men's semis and then the women's final or if it, I couldn't remember the, what the order was. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll take us through because I can tell we're going to have a lot of great questions today. So let's start just in general. How do you start finding the right bracket? Like what what should people do first if they're let's say let's a lot of people out there probably three, five, four, oh, let's say you've got a racket. You're like, I feel like this is getting outdated. I feel like it's losing its mustard on the ball, the feel a little bit. I feel like my racket's becoming dead. First of all, how do you know your racket's truly dead? You just feel it or is there like a a two-year test? I mean, when should people be changing out rackets in general? So a uh, really good question. Um, you know, in terms of rackets going dead, it, it, it's going to take a lot of restringings. And, um, you know, if, if you treat your equipment very well, uh, a racket should last a pretty long time. Um, I know, I know all tennis players at times can get frustrated and a little bit upset, but uh, a good way to keep your racket playing well is not to uh, wrap it around a uh, fence post or a net post, um, as as can happen at times. But uh, to answer your question about about rackets and sort of the the life of a racket, um, you know, there are stuff. There are parts of a tennis racket that break down, and probably the most the most common one's going to be the grip, right? The grip breaks down. You know, you have to change it or add an overgrip or a replacement grip. But another part of the racket that breaks down is going to be the grommets and the head guard. And the harder you are on that stuff in terms of digging out low balls or um, say if you catch a ball really close to the edge of the string bed, you can break a grommet. Um, a lot of that stuff is sort of uh, more perishable than I'd say the racket itself. Um, as far as when you know or when you feel like, uh, you know, let's say you had that honeymoon period with with your previous racket and it just felt so right and so good. And you felt so connected to the ball, like, you know, Harry Potter's wand. Um, <laughs> um, but the, let's say that feeling changes. Um, a lot of times with, with rackets, um, we have something that we really like and we've used it for so long 
And then we try something else. Like maybe we pick up a friend's racket and we go, oh my gosh, this is so much easier. Or man, this feels really different. I don't like it. Or man, this feels really different and I do like it. And so I think a lot of the time it's, it's not so much the racket that you have that is just completely disappearing in performance, but it's what have the manufacturers done lately that maybe you haven't seen or haven't tried and maybe it can really be suitable for your game style and your ability level. Yeah, great, great answer. And let's talk about that a little bit before we go into specifics. You know, uh, I get normally this time of year for Tennis Con, we actually go out to Newcomb's Ranch where Rod Laver's there and John Newcomb, Roy Emerson, I mean, literally all the people who made the game go. And one of the things that they will say is like, yeah, well, in our day, you couldn't be running off the court like Rafa and then flick your wrist and then hit a passing shot like 100 miles an hour banana around the net post. You just, you just That's just not going to happen with what we had to play with. So walk us through. Obviously, you can tell the difference between a wood racket and the rackets to, today. I mean, we don't. I don't think we need to really go deep into that. But even let's say like when – do they become really up? Is the technology upgraded every year? Do you notice a big change every five years? Like, when would you say the rackets have, as far as like, uh, just like iPhones almost, like when do the, does the technology really go? How long does it take before like, oh, we really got something like new, like this, if, you are, if you're using something five years ago, what we have today is like much better. What is, how does that kind of work? I think, um, a really good question, Pete. It's a it's a complicated answer. I think a lot of the times we don't know when a major development has happened until after the fact, right? Like uh, I think a lot of the times the manufacturers would say, you know, they're always hoping for that game changing product, but it's more the proof in the pudding. You know, six months or seven months after a release, did a product really get, um, you know, really pick up steam and people really start to adapt to it? Um, I would say graphite rackets, uh, in my opinion, are still going to be the biggest jump in terms of racket technology. I think, you know, to talk about the Nadal, Nadal banana forehand, which, by the way, most pro players still can't hit. Um, uh, he's a, a superhuman uh, in that sense. But I think the thing that was such a change was the advent of the polyester or or co-polyester tennis strings. Um, I think that, and and maybe it's not so much of a technology change, but that's also allowed players to play with maybe lighter rackets too. And so I don't think it's so much of a, okay, well now we're shifting from uh, graphite to carbon fiber, or in, in my opinion, it hasn't been so much that change, it's been, Using these different strings, the players, uh, incredible athletes that they are now, can play with a little lighter frame, swing faster, and still maintain that unbelievable control um, with with the stiffer string beds. Um, you know, you're also seeing kind of a, a change lately. Um, well, not even lately, probably since the late '90s, where things are shifting kind of away from that 93 square inch, the 95 square inch heads to more 98. 100 square inch heads. Um, and if you remember, you know, you had the contrast, you used to have your pretty much set uh, standard, like your mid-sized, you know, more like a wood racket, you know, even down to like 65 square inches and then more your your graphite mid-size, which would be 85, 90, you know, Roger started with his 90 uh, or his 85 and then went to a 90. And now you're seeing m way fewer of those rackets out there. And you're also seeing, you know, uh, a lot of the people watching probably remember Andre Agassi. He's probably the last um, big time pro player to use successfully an oversized racket. Uh, I think he used a 107. Um, maybe it was a 110, but a, yeah, an oversized I think he racket. 110 at one point. Yeah. Right. And so, so really what we've seen is sort of that what we call the tweener racket category get bigger, which is, you know, that 98 to 102 square inch head. Um, you know, probably anywhere between 11, uh, maybe 10 and a half to 11 and a half ounces. Um, 
you know, and, and the rackets basically, um, they've all kind of gone that route. Um, they're still, you know, you, I think, I think head and I think Wilson might still have, um, a thinner beam, you know, smaller headed rackets, but, when you've got guys like Federer who used to play a 90 and he's maybe the greatest ever and he's going, I need a little help. I need a little more. Uh, it it kind of makes sense why even the recreational players would go, well, why am I still playing with this 95 or why am I still, you know, I really love this 85, but you know, I'm not quite getting around as good as I used to. So it's, it's maybe time for me to, to upgrade to a little bit of a faster racket, a little bit of a, a more forgiving racket. Yeah. Uh, really cool. Guys, we're almost we're up to about 60 people on right now. We'd love to get over a hundred. So, like I say, make sure that you share this on social media with all your tennis buddies. Send a quick email, send a quick text. And if you're out there and feeling super inspired, make a TikTok dance video right now. Okay, so um let's talk about because we've talked about some rackets, and then I want to get into strings, because like oh, I've I've heard that from a lot of people, like. Yeah, the rackets are getting better, but like what really makes the difference is the strings that the pros are using. Like that's how they're somehow getting like lots more RPMs on the ball and the ball is going a little faster and all that kind of stuff. So definitely want to get in the strings as well. But as far as innovation goes, what are some award-winning rackets in your mind to where you just hear a lot of people who are Tennis Express customers go, this racket's awesome. Like we love it. What are... What are some of the best ones in your mind that you keep hearing over and over again? So one of the trends that that we've we've come on uh, lately is there was the the advent of sort of the um, you know pure drive kind of the the variable beams um, a little bit more power um, but what what started to happen especially with the amateur players is that you had you had folks playing with these rackets that are maybe a little bit too light and they started, they started getting into some arm issues. Um, and so I'm happy to report one of the biggest trends in I'd say the last five or six years has been the racket manufacturers saying, well, we obviously need to keep making these tweener frames, but we've got to find a way to make them more comfortable. And we've got to find a way to help keep that frequent player. You know, I, I, we don't want, we don't want it to happen where somebody plays a really long match and then they got to sit out the next week because they're having elbow trouble or, you know, a wrist strain. And so a couple of examples of this are um, head has graphene 360, uh, graphene 360 plus, And it's basically a graphite racket, but it's engineered a little bit differently to just try to make the racket still be responsive and still provide power, energy return and stability but also not leave your wrist and your elbow and your shoulder going, what the heck was that? Um, I need an Advil on the side of that racket. Um, so mm -hmm. Graphene 360 is a technology from head that, that they've put in, a Graphene 360 Plus now that they've put into their product lines. Um, the one that's gonna be the most popular for head is gonna be the head speed frames uh, endorsed by Djokovic. And then another one that's been big lately is the Wilson Clash. Um, it's uh, had a huge marketing campaign behind it, but again, it's sort of um, completely changed changed how they engineered the racket to still give you that game improving stability, but the the racket flexes very comfortably as well. Um, Yonix, uh, kind of a brand that's making a push right now, they've they've built uh, some vibration dampening technology into the handles of the frames, so they've sort of said we're making these great rackets, but we want to make them a little bit more comfortable for our high level players, but also amateurs uh, all the way up and down the NTRP scale. Uh, and then the lastly, Babolat, um, I think they probably took some criticism for um, having very stiff, firm, firm flexing rackets for a while, but now they found a way with their um, Cortex Pure Feel system to basically make their rackets, even though they're still on the firm side, they're much more comfortable. And, and they feel much better. There's much better ball feel with those frames now. So for me, that the, the big trend, um, maybe the biggest development technologically is finding a way to get these frames that are still uh, stable and user-friendly frames, but they're just a little bit more comfortable and easier on the user than they used to be. Very cool. Um, okay, well now let's get into the strings. Um, one thing, and let me know if this is still like the it 
thing or has it moved on? When What I'm hearing lately is the pros use poly in their strings and then some kind of blend usually with poly. That's what I've heard. I don't know if I'm right or wrong anymore. Maybe that maybe they're using, maybe they're on to something else. And I have also heard, and I like I like the way Polly hits, by the way. Um, but I've also heard too that oh, watch out for Polly, it'll mess up your arm. So is Polly still the it string? And um, if it still is a great string, why do people say you better watch out for it? It's going to mess up your arm. Uh so, so polyester, there's, there's no getting around it. It's here. It's here to stay. And, and most pro uh, college high level players, um, like you mentioned, either have polyester in the mains and the crosses. Um, they, they uh, perhaps have a polyester in the mains or natural gut is sort of the, the popular pairing right now. Um, Djokovic, uh, Federer, uh, Murray, they all blend uh, polyester with gut. Um, and then, you know, guys like uh, Nadal are playing all polyester, uses all RPM blast. Um, the biggest thing that I'll say about polyester strings is that they're here to stay. Um, it's a part of it, but there's, there's a few misconceptions, I think, um, that are out there about polyester. So um, take a tennis player. Um, if, if a tennis player does not swing with very good mechanics, at a very rapid pace and maybe the most important part, very consistently, uh, meaning that their stroke production is, is very similar each time or, or the same each time. Um, that's gonna be your candidate that a polyester string can help because if you're generating that racket head speed then polyester, it plays a lot firmer and it allows you to swing big with confidence that your shots can still drop into the court. Um, so you're basically playing, you're, you're able to swing fast in the tightest moments of your matches and have confidence that your shots aren't going to go long. The, the misconception happens, um, and I think the mistake happens where, let's say I'm a 4-5 player, but my swing speed is a little bit slower. Maybe I, I, I hit a little bit more of a classically trained flatter shot. Um, a polyester string isn't necessarily going to be the best for me because I'm not relying on that racket head speed to get the ball into the court. I'm more, my game style is more based on I'm trying to make contact with the ball early and try to put my opponent in trouble. So polyester is here to stay. It is not designed for everyone. And one thing I want our, our listeners out there to know is that, um, there are a lot of newer polyester strings that are are much easier on the arm than some of the first generation polyester strings but it's important to note that polyester strings probably more than any other material they lose their tension quickly um, a lot of our customers they end up buying a polyester string because they like that it it doesn't break and it and it really won't if you if you got a 16 gauge polyester string, most players, even good players, are not gonna not gonna be able to break that string very quickly. Um, and they they incorrectly say, well, if it's not broken, I don't need to fix it. And personally, I try to use it, I, I try to use the analogy of of like a performance sports car, where if if you drive a performance sports car and it's doing really well, you could drive it past when you need to get the oil changed. You could, you could keep driving it and you haven't gotten the oil changed, right? Well, eventually that car is gonna have some issues because you have refused to change the oil. And what I'd like to say about polyester strings is that even though they don't break, you need to swap them out because they lose that tension really fast. They don't provide a lot of uh, dampening as it is, but once they lose that tension, you're swinging harder and harder and harder to get the results you want and your best bet is probably to cut the cut those strings out before they break, uh, and you'll get a much better performance. It'll be much easier on your arm. And if you notice, that's why the pros on TV when they're playing polyester, they're switching every seven to nine games. Now, I wouldn't advise that. That's that's a little pricey for um, for the rest of us. But um, polyester is definitely um, it's it has overtaken professional tennis. And uh, for those out there that are curious about it always try it on the lowest end of the tension spectrum 
Uh, I think that's that's really really important. Uh, if you if you play sixty pounds in a uh, in a softer synthetic gut string, don't try RPM blast at sixty pounds. Uh, since it's stiffer, you got to drop that tension probably ten to fifteen pounds um, just to just allow yourself to adjust to the new the new. So material. you're even saying forty five isn't that bad with polyester? No, uh, it. It's again, you're talking about strings that are just inherently way stiffer than a uh, multi-filament string. And so whereas with a multi-filament string, you would need to, to string it uh, higher to maintain more control over the, the bounce off the string bed. With the polyester string, since it doesn't have a lot of give, you don't need to string it up that high. You can string it at, you know, 46, 45 pounds and still maintain a pretty stiff string bed, you can still control the ball with that. Um, in fact, I think I think right now we're seeing a lot of pros even tinkering with the, the low 40 pound range. Um, I haven't strung a polyester string over 50 pounds. I'm about a four or five, or I call it 4.75 level player. Um, I, uh, I haven't strung a, a polyester string over 50 pounds in my rackets in years. Just because I don't, I don't think that it it really is helping my performance to go to go that much tighter. Now, now when you're saying you're saying switch the strings out, okay? Don't because it loses its tension, right? Now, is that a number of days? Switch that number of days. Is it a number of matches, or is it like even if you're not getting that many matches, but it's sitting there for a certain amount of time, you gotta. You gotta switch it anyway. Like, wh what would you suggest to people who, you know, play one to three times a week, fairly consistently, like week after week, one to three times a week? Uh, do they go off how many sets they play and it's time to switch? Or like, it's been thirty days, it's been sixty days. They better switch it. Uh, what do you think? I've always been a believer in in you know frequency of use. Uh, for example, like. In, in my own game, I think about sets played. Uh, so, hey, you know, I've played 12 sets on this string bed, or I, I'm, this is, you know, and, and it's all an estimate. I'm not, I'm not keeping it on a, on a sheet of paper somewhere, but roughly, okay, I've played, um, you know, 20 to 25 sets on a string bed at, a, at about a four or five level, and I've been playing singles. That's a good thing to consider too. If you're playing singles, you're hitting a lot more balls. Um, you know, there's a lot more rallying from the back of the court. So um, common sense would be there's a lot, a lot bigger swings. Whereas you know, you can play doubles and maybe hit one ground stroke, a shot, a point. Um, and so the, the tension will last a little bit longer there. I've always been more of a kind of in general, okay, I've put 20, 22 sets into this string bed. Like it's probably time to restring. Um, for players that use, um, we're, we're actually uh, kind of getting into a, a time of the year where, uh, like, I'm in Texas right now where it was uh, 85 yesterday morning, right, and and pretty humid and sticky, and then in the afternoon it was in the 50s. And so that's another thing, like, when, when you're stringing your, your rackets, if it's, if it's really cold outside, you want to loosen up that tension if it's if it's hot, you want to go a little bit tighter because the ball tend to fly in the heat a little bit. Um, but yeah, I think uh, we used to say when, when I was teaching for our club players, like our ladies teams and stuff, at least once a season. So if you've got a fall season, a spring season and a summer season, try to get that racket restrung before each season. Um, if, if you are breaking strings and doing some damage um, to the strings, don't look at that as a bad thing. Look at it as you're you're doing your job and the strings are doing their job. Um, that's uh, that's kind of my thoughts on that. Okay, great. And then let's talk about string bed. Like, would this be considered a tight string bed, or and, and yeah, if yes, why yes, or a loose string bed? Like, what what are you talking about when you're talking about the string bed? And tight string beds and loose string beds. What what does that mean, and what what's the result? Okay, so all the different string bed combinations you have out there, um, most common is sixteen by nineteen. So basically, it means sixteen mains and then nineteen crosses. Okay, and so um, the the other common ones are um, eighteen twenty, 
Um, sixteen, eighteen is around. It, it isn't as common as it used to be, but it's it's certainly out there. And then we've had a few kind of different string patterns lately. Wilson did um, like their spin effect, and they were basically saying you know sixteen by fifteen patterns or six or eighteen by sixteen patterns. And so all of these configurations, basically, what you're talking about is they're manipulating or finding ways to manipulate the stiffness of the string bed. So Imagine for a second you have a racket and there's sometimes even with with junior rackets, you know, you might have a racket that's for a, a five or six year old and it's got 12 main strings and 10 cross strings. So because there's less strings in the racket, there's going to be much bigger spaces right in between in between the intersections of the strings. And so that's going to mean more power. It's going to mean more spin. And it's going to mean that the strings are rubbing against each other more, which means they're going to bust quicker. Okay. Um, a denser pattern, let's say like, uh, who's a good example? Uh, Djokovic plays an 18, uh, I think it's either an 18 by 20 or an 18 by 19 pattern. And that is much smaller spaces between the strings. And so the string bed stiffness stays a lot higher because the strings can't freely move against each other as much. And so what, what most people believe is with an 18 by 20 with a denser pattern, um, you're, you're not gonna get as much free power, as much free spin, but you might, you might really benefit from the increased precision um, of, of a racket like that. The other thing to keep in mind is head size plays a lot uh, in, this, in this arena too. So if I've got an uh, one of the old school, like a, a 90 square inch old head prestige um, with the, you know, with the leather grip on there. And, and it's got an 18 by 20 string pattern. That is a very difficult racket to, to generate a lot of spin with for, for an amateur player, uh, really at any level. Whereas if you have an 18 by 20 pattern in a 100 square inch racket or a 107 square inch racket, it, it actually would play a lot easier because it, it's just covering a bigger surface area. So mm -hmm. the number of strings is important, but I would also advise that not all of the 16 by 19 patterns are created the same. The 16 by 19 in the pure arrow might be a lot more spin friendly than the 16 by 19 in the pro staff. Same number of strings, but slightly different head shapes, slightly different head sizes. is also gonna play into how that stiff, the string bed stiffness plays in those rackets. Mm hmm. Very cool. Guys, we're almost at 100 and super excited. This is great. We have Sam Jones on right now from Tennis Express. Now, we also I, I'm going to ask Sam some questions uh, based off something really amazing, actually shocking that they did for us and TennisCon. They made our own page to where we can go shopping and get deals that no one else can get. Shh. Don't tell anybody. Don't you go tell somebody who's not part of Tennis Con, okay? Well, you can. You can if you want to, maybe. I don't know. Should they, Sam? This is like a Tennis Con thing. Come on. We're like we're like family here, guys. So this is a pretty cool thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen, and then we can take a look at some rackets together, and then maybe I can ask you some, some uh, questions about the racket, and then we can also look at some equipment. What do you think about that? Sounds great. All right. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to hit share, and... Let me know if you can see that, Sam. Can you see that? I can see it. It's beautiful. Okay. So, yes, it is beautiful. So, guys, look. If you go to tennisexpress.com forward slash info forward slash tennis con, look at that. We got our own name. You're going to find all these amazing deals that they made just for us. This is pretty awesome. Okay. This is like being an insider. And, uh, we're going to go to rackets to where we can click on here. We can find some rackets from Babolat. That's what Rafa uses. Head. That's what Djokovic uses. Wilson. That's what the Sir Roger Federer uses. Uh, Yonix, I believe. Isn't that what, what – what's that player who uh, – Kerber. Didn't Kerber use Yonix? Angie Kerber and uh, Stan Varinka, Mr. 100-mile-an-hour backhand. Yep. And uh, Donlop. Who is the big name using Donlop right now? Anybody? Uh, Kevin Anderson's had some injury troubles, but he's he's using Dunlop. Um, 
and they're they're making a move. They've got a bunch of young young Americans that have that have started to join the Dunlop bandwagon as well. Okay, so let's take a look at this top row. We got a racket for sixty nine. We got a racket for. Uh, we got a we got a pop up here. Let me see if I can get rid of that. I'll just go. No, thank you. And we got a Dunlop. We've got a Wilson, and we've got a Head. Now, are these all? Are these comp do they play? Does this top row play mostly the same? Are they completely different? What one should I pop up? And you can kind of tell me what's good and maybe different about it, and and uh, and we can see. kind of go row by row. So I've got the head. Yep. yeah. Go to that MXG one. Go to that first one. So we're gonna click on this. This is amazing, guys. Look at this. 69, 70 bucks. Sweet looking racket. Um, so tell us about this. Who would you recommend that use this racket? So the the, the MXG one is going to be a, a a good frame for um, a player that has some level of experience, um, and it's a very over engineered frame for this price. You're getting a racket that has uh, a magnesium injected bridge. Um, you can kind of see it. It's that silver section um, at the throat of the racket. There you go. And what it allows for is um, much more stability across the entire racket face. And it also increases the length slightly of the main strings for a little bit more power throughout the sweet spot. Um, the main technology here that Head was trying to accomplish is incredible stability uh, at a lightweight. Um, those of you out there, a lot of times, if you have something that's really lightweight, it loses its stability. And what Head was trying to do was kind of... Uh, you know, combat that fact. And the MXG1 is, is really a great value. It's a great performance racket. I, have, I haven't really talked to anyone that's hit with it and has not enjoyed it. Um, we've got it for a great price right now, pre-strung. Um, this racket can work for a lot of ability levels. Um, I believe it's 10.6 ounces unstrung. Um, I would say anyone from the 3.5 on up uh, level could could have some good success with the with the MXG one for sure. Okay, should we pick another one on this row, or do you want me to go down another row? Scroll down a bit there. Let's see what we got. You just kind of let me know what you want me to pick out next to review. All right, uh, let's check out um, let's check out that Dunlop CX four hundred there. Okay. 129. So the CX series from Dunlop, that's uh, re represented by Kevin Anderson on tour. Now, his version is, is it's a beast. It's a 95 square inch head. It's a very dense string pattern. It's basically for somebody that can play tennis like Kevin Anderson can. Um, what Dunlop did with the CX 400 is they made a, a controlled frame, but it's just a little bit more user friendly than, than Kevin Anderson's CX 200. So the racket's got a big sweet spot, a slightly thicker beam, um, uh, kind of continuing what I mentioned earlier, Dunlop has, has this technology and it's called Sonic core with Infinergy. Uh, it's developed by BASF and basically it's about comfort and, uh, and stability. And so all of the CX rackets are, are very user friendly. Uh, I'm sorry, not very user friendly. They're all very comfortable frames, and the CX400 is very user friendly. Uh, great value graphite frame from Dunlop. Awesome. Uh, let me let me just. Uh, okay, what, what what should we look at next? Let's spread the brand love around a little bit here. Uh, we've done Head and Dunlop. Um, we see any Babolats on there. Here's a Babolat right here. I always oh, like perfect. it. So this is a Babolat for 129. Right. So the, the drive G rackets are great. They're, they allow, um, they allow players at sort of a, a, a lesser price point to get, um, you know, kind of the feel for what the, the you know Babolat's known for is that sort of variable beam, uh, mid plus head size, power and mobility. Um, the G series are great rackets for um, 
kind of casual players, folks that are kind of getting into the game and maybe starting to take it a little bit more seriously. They're, they're going to be very easy to maneuver through, through the air. And again, these guys come strong and that's always, it's always nice. You there? Did we lose Sam? Let me go back to the, the stream. Are you there? Hi there. Guys, can you hear me? Uh, we'll stop sharing the screen here. Move. Sam is frozen. Who, who can still hear me? Did I, I know you, you can hear me. <laughs> we lose Sam. I'm, I'm not sure. Through. I'm back. Okay, you're here? I'm here. Okay, he's back. Okay, he's here. Okay, everybody, he's I'm here. All right, I'm okay. all right thank God, because I'm like, I don't know any of this stuff, Sam. Don't leave me. Come back. <laughs> I don't want to leave you alone. <laughs> uh, I was a man on an island going, I I don't know. Like, just go on their demo program. Dude, it's the man. They're trying to uh, shut us down. They're trying to shut us down. That's what happened. <laughs> okay, so that's the bab a lot. Um, May let's do what do one more racket and then we could go to some gear because okay. uh, you guys really have really hooked us up with some sweet stuff here. This is awesome. Um, got a lot of head Pacific B two. What is that? Who is that? Yeah, Pacific. Uh, I'm not sure if there's a, if they're still in the racket game, but for a while there they were making some some pretty solid performance rackets. They're probably most known for their uh, strings. They make a really nice natural gut. Uh huh. Okay. What about we? Let's take. A, I always, I always have heard uh, things about vocal. People have told me like vocal is a big underrated racket and it's really good. What, what's your opinion on this vocal racket we just picked up here? All right. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, one of the the string patterns that's kind of gone away um, and it's gone a little bit out of style is a a, a more open uh, sixteen by eighteen pattern, and I can't can't quite see the the specs there but vocal is one of the brands that have really kept that open string bed alive a lot of their rackets have that 16 by 18 16 by 19 string pattern another great technology that vocal has produced is they've got very nice vibration dampening built into the handle of their rackets to sort of help protect your your uh, swinging arm from from the vibration vocal has a niche for sure. Um, a, a lot of players, they use one and then their next racket, they're going to buy another one. Uh, they make great rackets. They also make great skis. Yeah, that's why I've heard about Vocal. It's very, um, there's a lot of brand loyalty, like even though it's not as popular as, uh, I guess, I mean, the big three are what? Babolat, Head, and Wilson. Am I right on that? Are those the most yeah, those, popular? For sure. Yeah. Those are the big three. The, the nice thing that we have now is You've got you've got those three, and you've got um, Yonex has has really upped their game, and Technofiber has really upped their game, and Dunlop has really upped their game. I mean, all of the manufacturers now um, across all the game styles and racket families, like they're really producing some quality stuff. Very cool. Okay, so let's go now to uh, first of all, guys. How awesome is this that they made us our own tennis con page? I mean, this is pretty awesome. I mean, uh, oh, you know what? Let's take a look at some apparel. What do you think? Some apparel. Uh, let's look at some uh, some Nike apparel. Forty five percent off shoes and all this stuff. And then we'll go to maybe some strings. Sounds Sweet. Good. Sweet. Let's do the, should we do the ladies or the men first? Uh, typically, I think we have more men on the call. So we'll do the ma male, the men, and then we'll do the, the ladies. And you kind of walk us through some of the, the shoes and what they do for you. You know, we always talk about the rack and how the racks have changed. But um, I saw, uh, if you watched the last dance with Michael Jordan, uh, he wore his first shoe he wore his first air jordans in like a tribute game like many years later and he said that after the game his feet were bleeding like crazy because he couldn't wear those old shoes anymore because the technology in the shoes have changed so much so 
Uh, tell us about some of these uh, shoes we're looking at here and, and what makes the shoe special and especially uh, good for tennis. So it's, it's funny that you say that about uh, the last dance because I, I have I have a few pairs of Stan Smiths, you know, just you know, which, which, which was the performance tennis shoe of its time. And every time I wear them, I'm wearing them with jeans and my dad goes, hey, I used to play tennis in those. And I'm like, I could never play tennis in these ever. Um, yeah. So so basically what makes a tennis shoe um, a question that we get a lot at, at Tennis Express is people use the term kind of casually. They say, hey, yeah, I need to put my tennis shoes on or I need, you know, tennis shoes. I need new tennis shoes. And what we really want to try um, and communicate is that tennis, especially now, is, is mostly played on hard court surfaces. And we want to make sure that, that folks have tennis specific shoes, which means that the outsole is a little bit, um, it, it can withstand a little bit more abrasions like from, from hard court tennis. Um, and like this one here, the, the Vapor Cage 4, they kind of redesigned what was one of their most popular shoes, just the, the Zoom Cage. Um, and they, re, they redid this, this shoe. They made it a little bit lighter. It's kind of always been one of, one of Nike's more stability um influenced shoes and so they they lightened it up basically in areas that that you're not typically going to wear it out and they reinforced it in the high wear areas um and it's got a lot of bright colors on it um but you know a lot of people say nike shoes are are really good for people that have narrow feet this is one that has a little bit of a wider toe box um so players out there if you if you wanted to try a nike shoe but but uh, we're worried about a, a a toe box that was too narrow. Give the give the Vapor Cage Four a try for sure. Awesome, awesome. All right. Well, let's take a look at another um, brand of shoe. Look at the, the. I like I like that green. Let me just take a look at this one. This one looks pretty cool. This is the Vapor too, but I so it comes in different colors. I kind of like I kind of like this one. Yeah. See, this one's actually. Uh, uh, it was supposed to be for Wimbledon RIP that we lost this year. Uh, thanks a lot, 2020. Um, <laughs> but they were going to have sort of that kind of grass stain cosmetic on, on their whole line uh, yeah. for the, for the players that were, that were going to be playing in Wimbledon. And we still got them. I think we've got them in, in the cage, for the vapor cage and in the, the vapor 10 as well. Um, it's just kind of a cool, um, yeah. Cool I like little that. cosmetic, and I, I love that old Nike Shield. The the Nike Court logo is always, always pretty cool. Yes, that is pretty cool. Okay, let's check out one more pair of shoes, and then maybe we'll go to some. Uh, well, we should we should look at some ladies. Um, let's look at some ladies shoes. Let's go to the ladies shoes. Uh, so, uh, and maybe we'll go to there's Serena the Legend. So. How about this looks pretty sweet. I'm going shopping for any of the, the ladies who are online right now. What do you think about that pick? That looks pretty sweet to me. Yeah, Nike, Tell us had, about some, Nike had some really snazzy looks for um, for the US Open this year. Um, and this was the, the women's Vapor 10. So the Vapor 10 is probably Nike's premier uh, lightweight, low to the ground match day shoe. Um, most, I would say, most Nike players on the WTA tour are wearing this shoe. Um, it's, it's um, again a very lightweight shoe, uh, kind of a narrow toe box. But players that wear it, they they wait for the next color and then they buy the new color because it's a uh, it's it's pretty much the standard in in match day shoes. It's lightweight, uh, easy to get around in step in comfort um now this is a shoe that if you're if you're looking for maximum support maximum cushioning maximum stability this is going to be more of your lightweight match day i want to be as as fast and as fit as a fiddle on the court this is the shoe that you'd wear it's it's not going to be your super stability super durability shoe but it's mm -hmm. a great a great shoe uh, a great job it nike sun with the vapor 10. it, it looks pretty super comfortable Okay. They look really cool. Yeah, they look really cool. Uh, let's see here. Let's go to 
Um, where are the where are the strings? I saw strings. I think we should take a look at some strings. And you can tell us. Oh, right here, string deals, forty percent off string deals, guys. And as Sam was saying, the game has really changed. The rackets are changing, but the strings can make or break your game. The feel. Are you a power player? Are you a touch player? This lots of times the strings that complements the way you can execute these shots. Am I right on that? Absolutely. So the, you know, starting right there at the top, Technofiber um, is a very well known for, um, for their strings. They're, they're producing pretty quality rackets now, but um, Technofiber Pro Red Code uh, used on tour by a very tall American tennis player. Um, very tall. Um, maybe went to Georgia, uh, University of Georgia. I, I think I, well, you gave it away right there. Should I give it, should I say it? Uh uh, yeah, Has anybody? Are the comments? Who who's he talking about? Let's see. If I, I'm gonna go go back. Who's he talking about right there? Well, if I come back and look at it, then I'm ruining the page. I gotta go. I gotta stay there. So I don't, can you see the comments coming through? Has anybody got it yet, Sam? I actually I'm looking at what you're looking at, so I can't see. Oh, okay. That. Anyway, I'll 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 let everybody know. That's John Isner, baby, the bulldog. Yeah. And so, you know, Pro Red Code has been around, but, you know, in the category of if it's not, if it's not broken, don't try to fix it. Um, it's a great, a great polyester string. It's, it's pretty comfortable. Um, it's one of the earlier generation uh, polyester strings. It does not uh, hold tension all that well, but man, eight bucks for uh, a premium tennis string is pretty solid. Um, that's a, <laughs> that's uh, amazing. That's actually amazing when you think about it. Uh, yeah. So let's take a look at another string deal. What should we look at next? What do you like? You, this is where I'm totally out of my element, my friend. So pick pick out a, a winner for us that people should go look at and try. Well, let's see here. Let's try to get to a different brand. Um I tell you what, why don't you, yeah, Multifeel is a good one from Technofiber. So Multifeel is is like a, I, I call it like a, a synthetic gut um, rebuilt. So it's got this this thicker core, and then it kind of has a multi-filament wrap around the outside. So you're going to get kind of a mix of the durability of a synthetic gut string and the comfort and softness and touch and feel of a multi-filament string. So it's a very over-engineered string, again, for, for a pretty good deal. This would be a good option for players if if you're if you're worried about natural gut kind of uh, hitting you in the pocketbook a little too hard. Um, Multi-feel can work um, as a substitute. Now, it can be used as a, you, you know, your mains and your crosses, or it can work well blended with a, with a polyester to try to help soften up the string bed, but... The other cool thing about Multifeel, and, and some of the other manufacturers have done this as well, uh, Head has as well with some of their multi-filament strings, is that they're offering them in some fun colors now, which is kind of nice. You know, typically a multi-filament's just been in the natural color, but now a lot of them have kind of some bright colors. So even if you're not, um, you know, uh, playing a polyester string, you can get some fun, fun colored strings to match your rackets or your mood. Mm-hmm. Very nice. Let me let me get out of this. This is fantastic. Thank you so much for spending time with us today. Sure. Uh, let's see here. So was that was this string thing I clicked on? Was that for just one brand of Technofiber, or I are there more? It, if I scroll down, will I, I hit other brands? Yeah. Oh, here we go. Bad lot. Yeah. There you go. Um, let's see. What do we got there? Do you like any of these or should we scroll for another brand? Um, let's see. Yeah, check out that uh, that first RPM Hurricane there. That sounds wicked. That sounds like, watch out for me. I'm about to just mess up your day. Yeah, you don't want to trifle with somebody that's got Hurricane in their racket. That's for sure. Um, <laughs> no, so, so RPM Hurricane is sort of the, um, if, if RPM Blast is... Is what I what is what I would call like uh, Hurricane 2.0, right? And so 
this is sort of what started it all. If you remember Andy Roddick, um, gosh, it doesn't seem that long ago, but he, he used to play um, Pro Hurricane Tour and Babolats now tried to make their string families a little bit easier to follow. So all of their polyester strings are going to be in what's called the RPM um, category. And so RPM Hurricane is this bright yellow. It's, it's eight-sided to kind of help you generate some spin. Uh, it's one of the earlier polyesters, but it's still a very good quality string. There's even some tour players that are still using it. Ryan Harrison um, uh, from our own uh, state of Texas is is still playing Pro Hurricane Tour on uh, on tour. Um, again, a great string, and then it's it's a pretty good value. A, a lot of the time, these these string deals, it, it's perfectly good string. It's just manufacturers keep trying to innovate and so we've got this stuff left and we want our customers to be able to take advantage of it that's great all right we'll go down do one more and then we'll let people um i'll get the link for people to where they can uh go and check this out we're going to keep this up for a limited time we haven't decided on the deadline how long you guys can look at this you know so this, these deals will be up for a limited time. So if you want to try some of these things out, you got some great deals um, to, to work with. Uh, what do you think here? Stop me when you see something you like. Let's try We've done a multi-filament and we've done a polyester. Let's try to do just a synthetic gut string if we can. There's got to be a synthetic gut string there somewhere. Um, maybe Dunlop. Let's see. S gut should be a good one. Uh, any of those varieties? Should I pick it? Yeah, that's perfect. And what what's the difference between a seven how, uh, sixteen gauge, seventeen gauge? That's that's the those are the two popular ones. Is there an eighteen gauge? Is there a nineteen gauge? Is there a four gauge? Like how many gauges are there of string? And what's the difference between a sixteen and a seventeen? Okay, so. The nomenclature is the the higher the number, the thinner it's going to be. So the thinner that that cross section is going to be. So like you said, most commonly you're going to have, you know, 1.3 uh, millimeter, which is going to be a 16 gauge. And then you'll have um, 1.25 millimeter, which has kind of been in vogue lately. And it's either referred to as 16 L or 16 light or some of the manufacturers um, will call that a 17 gauge string. So the thinner the string, the more power, the more spin, um, uh, and it's gonna break quicker, okay? Um, the, the thicker the string, it's gonna be a little bit firmer, uh, more control, um, a little bit less power, uh, but increased durability. And, if and I may, as you go up and gauge, the strings get thinner, right? So a, a, right. a 17 is thinner than a, and a 16, how high a gauge does it go up to? Is there an 18? Is there a 19 gauge? Yes, there are. And um, if if there are those people out there that want to dabble in a polyester, um, you heard me mention that it's stiffer material. I would advise them to go the thinnest gauge possible, which I believe right now there's 19 gauge, there's 20 gauge. And, and some of the, I think Selenko has some 20 gauge options. So if, if you've ever been curious about, about the feel of a polyester, but you want to make sure that you're, you're not going to go too stiff too soon, um, go the thinnest gauge that, that you can do. Um, so yeah, it's, it's pretty common now. You've got, I'd say 17 gauge is sort of the default uh, for, for a polyester string, but yeah, you've got, you've got 17, 18 gauge and multi-filament strings as well. Um, and again, they're just, the thinner the gauge, the the better feel, the more spin, the more bite. But on the on the downside, there you're gonna you're gonna cut through it a little bit quicker. Very cool. Well, this is this is excellent. Let me go back to our special deal here. There it is. Look at that. Look at that, guys. Let me just let me just run up and down this. I mean, this page is kind of like tennis con. There's so much in it. You can't really go through it all in one sitting. That's why everybody out there, we are closing tomorrow night where registration, where you get a lifetime access pass. So you should definitely consider that. But look at this. You've got the shoes, 
that you got apparel you got deals off of, you got bags. That's always fun as a tennis player to get yourself a new bag and look at all the, the different zippers and compartments and kind of plan out what you're going to put in there. And then two months later, you'll find an old rotten banana and you're like, oh, I forgot I left that in there. <laughs> then you got the racket and more apparel, twenty under twenty five dollars. I just, I just gotta look myself, okay? I just gotta, if you don't mind, say I just gotta look myself at what are some nice uh, under twenty five. I like that tennis Adidas shirt. That's kind of cool. Let's, we haven't given, we have. Let's take a look at the ladies here. What, what, what's for the ladies under twenty five bucks? Oh, this is classic, guys. When I was growing up. You don't see it as much today. But when I was growing up, you wouldn't walk into one club and not see somebody wearing an Aless shirt. Am I right or Is am I wrong? How you say it? I've never known how to say it. Aless, Elite, it? I don't know. But I'm telling you, you couldn't walk into a tennis club in the 80s and not see that logo. That and Sergio Dacchini. Guys, remember that? McEnroe wearing that? So that's kind of cool. I think the ladies should pick up one of those. You always need more t-shirts too. Always. Yeah. So these are pretty sweet. Look at that. Some Nike uh, shirts. 18 bucks. Got the USA logo on it. it looks, these are looking sharp, man. Uh, there was, are these dresses you can get? Pick up a dress for under 20, 25 bucks. Come on now. And it's sharp. Is that a dress or like a shirt? That's a top, huh? That's yeah, I don't top. think you can wear that as a dress. Yeah, that's a top. Like I said, I'm, I'm not really uh, – this is this is my weakness right here. But it looks cool. I think that looks pretty sharp. I think you go to the courts looking with that, ladies. You're going to be looking sharp. Get the Okay, this is the uh, Coco Goff special. She's New Balance, isn't she? Yep. Yep. So – yeah, she's kind of putting New Balance on on the map. Yeah, five years ago, if you were if you were, if you were, if you were wearing New Balance five years ago, you were you were you were you were on your way to the movie theater or something. You weren't you weren't playing tennis, but now New Balance is really coming into its own, and I think Coco Golf wears the New Balance pretty darn well. You got some skirts, got some. Got some uh, visors. Got, I got a lot of cool stuff. Okay. So I'm going to come here and get this link. And I think after I um, get off with you, I think I'm, <laughs> I'm going to go look at my own stuff. I'm going to go parouse this closer for my own deals here. Just going to go shopping? Yeah, I think I'll go shopping. So, guys, remember, tonight I'm going to do Grand Slam Trivia, and you can get a $100 gift card from me, and then you can go to the – Go to our tennis con site here and you can you can go shopping on me that's that's pretty sweet can't beat that so this is a lot of fun this is a lot of fun and uh, i'm going to put the link right here so i just put the link into the chat i'm going to also then show it for everybody so you guys can take a screenshot of that Go shopping. I'll be emailing this out uh, later in the week, too, uh, if you're on this call and you forget. But definitely, I would screenshot this right now. I'd click the link. I just put it into our chat. And this is pretty, pretty fun stuff. Thank you so much for today. This was this was amazing. And uh, we're super happy and grateful that Tennis Express is part of Tennis Con. And so make sure you tell all your Tennis Express family back there how how appreciative you we are that that uh, you know we love Tennis Express. Pete, if I may, real quick, uh, just kind of one one postscript on rackets and strings. Uh, our founder uh, Brad has always said, and I I think it's really true, is that you know no one racket is made for every person, and no one string is made for every person. But at Tennis Express, there's there's a racket for you. And, and we can find, we've got a great demo program. Uh, we can help you find uh, the racket for your game. And we can help you match that racket with the perfect string for your game. So uh, thanks so much for having me on. And uh, everybody out there, keep Tennis Express in mind. The holiday season is coming up. 
it's going to be a weird holiday season. I can already tell, but um, we're certainly going to have more deals and, and more stuff coming down the pipeline for, for our customers and for tennis players everywhere. Yeah. I got a couple of questions if you don't mind. Like we had um, sure. Christopher asks, how does the Babolat hurricane differ from the addiction string? So um, you got different makeups of the string. So addiction is going to be a multi-filament. Uh, it's designed much more for comfort, um, comfort, feel, um, softer at contact. Uh, RPM Hurricane is going to be a, a co-polyester. So it's going to be much firmer. Um, uh, it's going to be uh, a little bit more uh, resistant to abrasion, um, a little bit more durable. But remember that balance, the, the stiffer strings are going to lose their tension a little bit faster. Yeah. If you go to the, I believe I've seen you do this, Sam, on your Tennis Express website and also your YouTube channel. Sam, you got and you 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 hit with some rackets too. You demo some rackets, and uh, so what do you feel about that Wilson Clash? Have you had a chance to swing that around? Wilson Clash is as as different a a racket that that has come out in a while. Um, it it is a truly unique hitting experience. It, it flexes a lot when you hit the ball, which, um, you know, in the past, if a racket flexed a lot, you'd almost be like, man, this is, it's flexing too much, but there's a couple of technologies that, that Wilson built into the clash that allows it to flex, but it can actually help, help you with stability as well. Um, it's, it's a very comfortable, very arm friendly frame, which is so important these these days in terms of in terms of keeping people out on the court um the the, the clash is probably uh top three top four comfortable rackets out there on the market today and it's got a lot of different um different weight uh combinations that you can go with um and then i think we're, we're gonna have some more um clash related stuff as we get into 2021 as well all right. Do you see that question right in front of you? Uh, Luxon Smart String is really smart. What advantage does it have over the other Luxon 4G strings? What other strings would you combine with this string? So I remember reviewing this string, and it is. I do not think that the Luxon String actually has an IQ. I, I don't think we've reached that point of technology yet. But there is something very unique about the technology. So starting out like 4G is, is Luxalon's probably firmest feeling and best tension maintenance polyester string. So if you are seeking the utmost in control and the utmost in um, um, string bed stiffness and tension maintenance, then 4G is the way to go. Um, Luxalon Smart is kind of a unique idea and it basically is designed to the faster you swing, it's supposed to stiffen for more control. And on softer swings or touch shots or drop volleys or drop shots, it's supposed to be a little softer. So it's supposed to kind of give you two different feels depending on your swing speed. And I don't know the, the scientific evidence, but when we play tested this string, Luxalon advised pretty low tension. Uh, I think we, we had ours, like we were talking earlier, like 43 or 44 pounds. And we strung it at that. And I did feel, I did feel it. I feel like the, the faster you swing, it feels like it has the control of the polyester string. And then on, on softer swings or slower swings, you feel like you're getting a little bit more help in the power and control department. So I don't have the scientific degree, but, but there, there is something to it. And I think Luxalon Smart is probably a much more um, user-friendly polyester string than, than uh, Luxalon 4G. Yeah, that's kind of all. A wild concept, uh, what, what you're saying there. Uh, does Tennis Express, and this is what I always say, you know, a lot of people will ask me, and kind of like you were saying that your owner, Brad, uh, I, I kind of feel the same way as people ask, since I'm a coach, like, well, what, sh what racket should they get? And I'm like, well, the greatest part of tennis, which is not a part of everything that you can do in life. There's not many things where you just go, you know what, give me that. I'm going to go play with it for a couple of weeks, and I'll decide I'm going to buy it from you you know like that's an amazing concept that tennis has so tell us about your demo program because the answer is yes they do have a demo program and, and how's that work is every racket available for demo are there only certain rackets and at a certain price point where you can demo it or is like everything on the table 
uh, how long you get to use it, how much you have to pay down to start using it, and, and how does it all work? So, yes, we do have a demo program at Tennis Express. It, it is so important to try before you buy um, with, with Tennis Rack is we don't want anybody uh, spending money on something that they're not sure about. So you can demo up to four rackets uh, from all the big brands, uh, Head, Wilson, Babolat, uh, Yonix, Dunlop, uh, Technofiber, all the big boys. Um, you, can, you can demo up to four rackets at one time. It's $17.99. The rackets will ship to your um, to your house, and they'll ship with a return shipping label. So it's wait, wait, hold on, wait a second. Seventeen dollars and ninety nine cents to demo four rackets. That is correct, and that includes shipping. Yeah, so it, it has a, a a prepaid shipping label for you to ship back. Um, ship wow, back to uh, um, that's amazing. When you're done with them. Um, but uh, yeah, I always say it, um, you know, it's the golden age of the demo. Um, it, it's weird in a way, right? That like, if you're going to spend $500 on an iPhone, I feel like they should give it to you for a month to test it and try it. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, for, for tennis rackets, for sure. That's, that is the best, that is the best way that you can help decipher, you know, what racket is for you. It's by finding out what racket's not for you too. Um, mm -hmm. so it's just that compare and contrast, you know, the, the different feels out there. And like I said earlier, there's just so much out there, uh, as far as rackets and all of the manufacturers have really, um, produced multiple lines for, for different game styles and ability levels. And you're doing yourself a disservice if you're not, if you're not willing to try at least a few, at least a few of the models out there. That's great. Is there a best string for the EZO 98? Well, of course there is, but it depends on who you are. Um, uh, no, loaded I question. Think, I, sure. think Jay, I think Jay has a little more of a classic game because he's always asking about the Continental Grip. So Okay, so so I would recommend um, let's stay within the Yonix family. Um, Yonix has a really nice multi-filament string, and it's called Rexis, R-E-X-I-S. Uh, very soft, very comfortable, and then... Uh, on the polyester side of things, one of the most popular polyesters on tour is the Yonix Poly Tour Pro, and it's available in super bright flash yellow. And I think they have a new a new uh, bright blue option as well. But two great strings from Yonix. Okay, this was this was amazing. Thank you so much. Got a good education on our rackets today. Um, Take a look at the link I'm putting right in there right now, guys. TennisExpress.com forward slash info forward slash tennis cone. And go there and just take a look and start to think about the holidays. Go, you know, it's time to treat me. Santa should come early this year and get mm -hmm. yourself some cool stuff. Got to start dropping those hints, you know. So yeah. What you want to. Yeah. Or just buy it for yourself. Just go buy That's it. That's right. <laughs> um, and... Yeah, that's the best part about being an adult. Like everybody always, oh, I wish I was a kid again. I don't wish I was a kid again. I had to wait and rely on what somebody's going to buy me. If I want somebody, just go buy it. Like being an adult is way better than being a kid. So if you look at this stuff and you want it, and uh, you know it's not going to break break the bank on you, just go treat yourself. Um, okay, guys. So what we're going to do, we're going to stop uh, here, and then at four o'clock, I'm going to have Jeff Solenstein on, and we're going to get into mindset. You know. And he is really, really good on this stuff. And and uh, so this is going to be great. Jeff Solenstein, former top 100 ATP pro, played in front of 23,000 screaming fans with Macro announcing the match and won the first set against Michael Cheng. When Michael Cheng was number two in the world. It wasn't like Michael Cheng was on his way out or a super young guy. He was number two in the world. Jeff Solenstein took the first set off the dude. And it was pretty cool. And he gives amazing instructions. So we're going to be on that. Uh, Neil says... And he's one of the ones who won a, a gift card, by the way. Um, Neil says Tennis Con 4 rocks. Then at 5.15, we're going live with Gigi Fernandez, 17-time Grand Slam champion. I mean, that's amazing, right? And then at 8.15, my buddy Maribon Aranchad from the Tennis Summit, which Sam, I was telling you about, he runs the Tennis Summit, which is a lot like Tennis Con, and it's super awesome. And Maribon might even be a nicer guy than me. I really think so. 
and we're on at 815 and we're going to play, uh, we're going to go through the top lessons of tennis con. I've already written down some stuff off Jorge's presentation, which was amazing today. Uh, what I decided to do, if you guys weren't on the last one, we've done so many amazing live streams. Like we could have just like sold live stream tennis con for 67 or 97 bucks. But what we're going to do is we're going to take all those live streams. I'm going to package that up for you too and put it inside the tennis con vault. So I'm going to put the link too, and this will actually be the tennis express special link. And if you click on that, uh, if you click on this link, I'm about to put in there, you can go get yourself a copy of tennis con Four. you're going to get all these live streams that you've been watching over the last week, as well as the 40 plus instructional videos, which are amazing in tennis con, which we cover every single topic from serving to ground stroke and volleys and specialty shots like topspin lobs and drop shots and heavy topspin like Rafa. We cover all that on Tuesday and drills that you can do, the slice backhand, uh, low volleys, everything on Tuesday with technique. Wednesday was about uh, strategy where we had Gigi Fernandez and other great instructors teaching you about the strategy of the game, fuzzy yellow balls, essential tennis. That was Wednesday. Thursday, it was about big mindset, and we start off with Rick Macy, which do you ever get – is anybody larger than life than Rick Macy and about the mind? And Jeff Greenwald, who we had on last night, who's one of the best players over 50 in the world, sports psychologist. And Friday was all about training big and training better. That was the fitness. In fact, one of our people on the last call said that he did Marissa's cardio tennis to get ready for his match today for his warm-up, which Marissa did an amazing job from Rip at Tennis. And so that's all there. You can actually still see Friday till midnight tonight. Then that goes away. Then tomorrow, Sunday, it's all not going to be there. But if you want to keep it forever, when we close, you can get yourself a lifetime access pass. Sam, thank you so much. Have a great day. And I really appreciate your time today. Thanks so much, Pete. Everyone enjoy. Have a great weekend.